Hi everyone, I'm going to start clearing the ruins in this episode. I'll be trying to get nearly all of the available loot, which is why this is going to take a while. I want to have the option of crafting a lot of the special items that can only be crafted through the ancient pseudoscience station. And to craft a lot of those items, I need the thulocyte, which is found all over the ruins. I'm approaching an area with monkeys. Thulocyte walls will be scattered throughout this area. And in order to get the thulocyte fragments from these walls, I have to hammer them. The monkeys are going to be a problem if I simply ignore them while I try to get all of the fragments. They will be able to occasionally steal some from the ground, and because I choose to bring Hutch for the extra inventory space, the monkeys will also be able to steal items from Hutch. Also, if I get caught around the monkeys during the peak of the nightmare cycle, all of them will turn into their very aggressive shadow form. If a lot of the shadow monkeys start chasing me, I will be forced to run away for a very long time. So to avoid all of the possible problems that these guys can cause, I like to kill all of them first before I start gathering. I also want to destroy all of their homes to prevent them from respawning. One of the best ways to do this is to wait for the nightmare cycle and wait for the monkeys to turn into their shadow form. They are very aggressive in their shadow form, but if you can lure only a few of them at a time, fighting them becomes a lot easier. That way I don't have to spend forever trying to chase them around. However, I did farm a lot of blow darts in the previous episodes specifically to use on the monkeys. If I enter this area and they are not yet in their shadow form, I'll start killing them with the blow darts. The monkeys actually have 125 health and a blow dart does only 100 damage. It will take me 2 blow darts per monkey and that is very expensive. If you are going to spend the time to farm blow darts, they are really much better spent on fighting bosses but we pick and choose how we want to fight things in this game. I prefer not to use things like blow darts or gunpowder for bosses, but with the monkeys I find them so irritating that I really enjoy shooting them down. If I was using Wolfgang or Whitford though, it becomes a lot more efficient. Blow darts are affected by their damage modifiers. Wigfrid and Wolfgang in Mighty Farm would be able to kill a monkey with just one blow dart each. The manure that the monkeys throw doesn't do any damage, it just decreases sanity very rapidly. It can be a little dangerous because the shadow creatures will start coming once I become insane, and the monkeys can stun me while I'm fighting the shadow creatures. It might look like I'm missing with some of the darts, but the dart isn't actually spent unless it hits something so it is okay for me to just hold down F while I attack them.
I've cleared all of the monkeys in this area now, and I'm free to hammer down the thulicide walls. I've run out of blow darts, and there will be another densely populated monkey area later on. I just wanted to show this as a fun option, but I will try to deal with the rest of the monkeys in the ruins in a more normal manner. I really want to craft moggles now, so I'm going to kill a lot of these available death worms. The worms actually do 75 damage, so while they are not difficult to fight, they are quite dangerous to Maxwell. I would die to just one hit from them if I did not wear armor and got a little careless. I only need one glowberry to craft moggles, and I don't remember anymore why I decided to kill so many worms. Maybe I wanted the additional glowberries to fuel the moggles later on. I also need 4 gold to craft the 2 electrical doodads for the moggles. I forgot to bring gold from the surface, but I can get gold from the earthquakes, or I can mine the stalagmites that are not too far away from the base that I built here. Now I can start hammering the thulicide walls. The tall ones will give two thulicide fragments while the short ones will give only one when hammered. The walls that are flat on the ground will give none so there is no need to hammer them and they will only take away from the hammer's durability. I need one more gold to be able to craft muggles, and I really should just mine a stalagmite for gold before I enter this monkey area. But the monkey is already in their shadow form, and I did not want to waste this opportunity to clear a few of them. If I had the muggles at this point, I would be able to see them right now, and I can slowly approach and aggro around one or two at a time. That would make fighting them very simple. But without being able to see them from afar, I can only tell from the noises that they make that a few of them are about to chase me. The shadow monkeys are very much like hounds. They are very aggressive towards nearly anything that they can attack. They chase for a very long time and they are difficult to fight alone when there are a lot of them. But like hounds, they are easy enough to fight when there are only a few of them. Before the recent updates, I would not have destroyed these two monkey pods. I think they are the closest pods to my base and monkeys are a great source of nightmare fuel. If I left them alone, I could use them as a source of nightmare fuel later on. I could place walls around these two pods for now while the monkeys are dead, so further spawns wouldn't bother me while I'm hammering the thulicide walls. But destroying monkey pods is no longer permanent. Even if I were to destroy all of the monkey pods in this run, they would eventually respawn if I were to kill the fuel weaver and the ruins reset itself. 
so I can just use the respawn pods later on if I want to use the monkeys for nightmare fuel. But for now, I want to get rid of them. So far I've been careful enough in approaching them that I've only had 3 shadow monkeys come after me. Now the nightmare phase is over and I can walk right into them. I won't be able to kill them right now without spending a lot of time chasing them around, but I can start destroying the pods while they are not dangerous. After the pods have been destroyed I can finally work on crafting the muggles. Hopefully I can come back before the next nightmare phase with the muggles and I can finally clear all of the monkeys. I have the gold for the electrical doodads. Now I just need two mole worms. Although I can't see the clock, I can tell that it is morning because the mole worms return to their burrows in the morning. I'm going to have to wait for dusk or night before I can hammer the moles in these two burrows. It must be dusk now because the mole worms are out of their burrows. I'll just bait them with a mineral and I can stun and gather them with a the hammer. Mole worms have 25 health and the hammer does 17 damage, which is why hammering the same mole worm twice kills them. Wolfgang in its mighty form can actually kill a mole worm with a single hit. All the other characters would only stun a full health mole worm with one hit from a hammer. Now that I have the muggles, I can clearly see the monkeys and it should be easier for me to aggro only a few of them at a time. Ironically, I think I did better with a minor hat. I knew I was a little late and the nightmare phase would probably end before I can clear all of them, so I wanted to rush it a little. Unfortunately, I think I made it a lot worse.
Similar to hounds, you can also lure the shadow monkeys to other mobs to distract them. Well the nightmare phase ended and I wasn't able to clear all of them in time. Now I'm going to spend a little time chasing them around. I can use the edges of the surface to corner them. It's a little difficult though and it can sometimes take a lot of effort to corner them. But there are only a few left so it should be okay. The only way to get the loot from these cave holes is with the lazy forager. That is an item crafted from the ancient pseudoscience station, so I will be returning to these cave holes later on after I've crafted that item. These relics such as tables, chairs, and bases can also be destroyed by just attacking them with my walking cane for more loot. Most of the time they will just drop rocks, cut stone, and frazzled wires. They do however have a small chance of dropping the orange, yellow, and green gems, as well as gears, nightmare fuel, and thulacite. But I think the chance of these rare drops from the relics is a little too low, and I will not be bothering with them in this run. I'm going to mine these nearby stalagmites to get the gold and need to craft an opulent pickaxe. I had a shadow miner with me but something must have killed it early on. I'm still going to try to use a shadow miner for the statues just because I've never cleared the ruins with Maxwell before. But obviously I want to be able to make a pickaxe just in case the shadow puppet dies again.
I think I've cleared all of the monkeys at this point. This was not really necessary, but I think they are the most irritating part of the ruins. I do like the feeling of being completely rid of them. That's all for now guys. In the next part, I'll be clearing the clockworks and fighting a lot of shadow creatures. Thank you for watching, I'll see you then.